Distinguished and honored guests, brothers of the Sons of Union veterans of the Civil War and the Civil and the Reserve, ladies and gentlemen, for those who do, do not know me, I am Frank Tomasello. I'm the commander of the Louis R. Francine Camp No. 7, Sons of Union veterans of the Civil War. On behalf of the Sons of Union veterans, I welcome and thank you for being here to help us celebrate the dedication of Atlanta County's last Civil War veterans marker. There can be only one, so this event is indeed unique. I am both honored and humbled to see all of you here for the purpose of honoring the service and sacrifice of one Samuel K. Morey. I defer to other speakers today to present a picture of Samuel Morey the man. I would briefly like to place today's ceremony in what I feel is its proper context by answering the question, why does Samuel Morey matter to us today? I submit to you that the passing of Private Morey on February 20th, 1943, represents a metaphorical end of an era, the most important era in the history of this great nation. From the time of our founding, our Republican form of government was considered but an experiment, and one that many, both here and abroad, deemed ill-advised and would have delighted in its failure. The Civil War was the greatest crisis this country has ever faced. Had the outcome been different, we would have ultimately ceased to be as a union, and the principles of self-government and democracy would have been lost to humanity for many, many years, if not forever. But the Union was saved by humble men like Samuel Morey, who answered the nation's call, left their families, their livelihoods, the comforts of home, and faced unrelenting hardship and danger to their lives and health. Through the sacrifices of these men, the nation was not lost, the experiment was not a failure, and we emerged not only a stronger nation, but a better one. A nation finally and firmly committed to one of its founding principles, that being that all men are created equal. It is therefore of the utmost importance that we today recognize and remember just what was at stake during the Civil War and how it shaped the world we inherited from Samuel Morey. It is only with this knowledge that we can face the challenges of today and those of tomorrow and continue the great American experiment. As Samuel Morey passed from this life to the next, our nation was in the early stages of the second major global conflict to devastate the world in a generation. I can't know for sure, but I suspect little note was taken at the time of the passing of this old soldier, given two intervening wars and so many young men then dying in a third all over the globe. In that respect, I believe he is owed a day such as today and a debt that was long overdue. I first learned of Samuel Morey about a year ago. I've spent so much time thinking and learning what I could of him since then that I feel somehow justified in saying that I knew him. From what I have learned, there is one thing that I am very sure of. He would be loving every minute of this. And now, without further ado, I would call upon Reverend Ash to offer the invocation. <coughs> Thank you, Reverend Ash. Thank you, Frank. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, in Him we live and move and have our being. We gather here on this crisp, sunny November Saturday morning to dedicate this monument to Private Frank Morey, who died many years ago but his death was the last veteran in Atlantic County of the Civil War. And so unite us in the spirit of this dedication. Keep us bound together in our commitment to peace and to freedom and justice. And join us as we remember him and all those who served in that Civil War. And be among us with your joy and your love as we share friendship Reverence and dedication. In the name of you, our Lord and our God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Ash.
point, I would ask um, Tom Burke, representing the, Nash uh, the State Department, Sons of Union veterans of the Civil War, to say a few words. Tom is a very well-known, very well-respected advocate of New Jersey in the Civil War. Thank you, Tom. Hi, I'm here today representing, on behalf of uh, Robert Meyer, the New Jersey State Department Commander. I'd just like, like to welcome all you people and, and thank you for coming out today. Uh, unfortunately, in today's climate, uh, celebrating the Civil War has become uh, kind of uh, politically incorrect, and it's wonderful to see such a large crowd here today to commemorate this occasion. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next, I would call upon Andrew McGill. Uh, he will be representing himself as well as another Maury descendant. Andrew does descend uh, from the Maury family. Thank you, Andrew. Good morning. I'd like to thank first Frank Tomasello and uh, Louis Francine and seven of the Sons of Union veterans for letting me make a few remarks to you uh, this morning. My name is Andy McGill, and I'm here today with my sister Patty Morey and my daughter Elizabeth Catherine Morey McGill to celebrate the dedication of the new JAR monument uh, which honors Private Samuel Morey, as you heard, Atlantic County's last Civil War veteran, and my third great uncle, Patty's third great uncle, and Elizabeth's fourth great uncle. About four years ago, I discovered that one of my great great grandfathers was named Reuben Morey Sr. His family was mainly from the Tuckerton and Little Egg Harbor area of what was then Burlington County, but is now in Ocean County. Reuben and his older brother, William, served in Company K of the 10th New Jersey Volunteer Infantry. Along with two of his wife's brothers, John and Job Grant, and also their sister Rachel Grant's husband, James Gale. Many of the men in this area of uh, what's now Ocean County would actually serve in Company K of the 10th New Jersey. James Gale would be wounded at the Battle of Cedar Creek in October of 1864 in the Shenandoah Valley but all five of these family members would survive the war. Another Maury brother was Nicholas, who served in the 4th New Jersey Infantry. All of them are buried in Tuckerton's Greenwood Cemetery. As my research was rapidly adding Civil War veterans to the list of my kinsmen, I came across the name of Samuel, who was the youngest of these Maury brothers. Somehow he ended up enlisting in the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry in 1862 in Philadelphia. I, I learned through Ancestry.com that he lived to be 103 years old, having outlived most of his wartime comrades and fellow GAR members, living until 1943. I immediately sought out info on the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry, and soon found a regimental history called One Good Regiment, written by Harold Hand, known as Sonny Hand. As I glanced at the first few pages of the book online, I was astonished to find that the book's author was actually Samuel Morey's great-great-grandson, and therefore my not-too-distant cousin. Needless to say, I bought the book and soon read all about the regiment's exploits and about where Samuel served while with the regiment. The book is well-researched and written, and it has a lot of first-hand accounts from members of the regiment. I definitely highly recommend it to anyone who enjoys reading a, a good regimental history. It was really and truly an interesting regiment, first recruited as the Irish Dragoons by mostly Fenian officers, and intended to serve as part of Thomas Francis Marr's Irish Brigade. While it never actually did join the Army of the Potomac's famed Irish Brigade, it did serve in many of that Army's campaigns before actually ending the war in North Carolina as part of General William Tecumseh Sherman's Cavalry Corps. Today I think it's fitting and proper to express my gratitude to Samuel Morey and his brothers who left their homes and in some cases wives and small children to serve when their country called. And to express gratitude to all who fought to preserve the Union and the armies and the navies of the United States. By their service and sacrifice, the rebellion was suppressed and as Abraham Lincoln predicted, 
they nobly saved the last best hope of Earth. Let us also acknowledge the gratitude we owe to all who have served in our nation's armed forces from the time of the revolution up to the present. One such man brings us here today, a common soldier of the Civil War, Samuel Moore. Again, I wish to thank the Sons of Union veterans for their work in carefully cleaning Samuel's gravestone and in honoring his service and in recognizing his designation as Atlanta County's last Civil War veteran. My thanks also to everybody who participated in today's tribute, including the Honor Guard of the Company A, 7th New Jersey SUV, Beck's Philadelphia Brigade Band, who's providing with, with such fine music, and to all who attended to share in this dedication and pay their respects to a common soldier of the Civil War. As I mentioned, uh, Sonny Hand is the great-great-grandson of Samuel Morey, and he wrote the regimental history. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here, but he did send a message, which I now read to you. Sonny says, Thank you, Frank Tomasello and the Sons of Union veterans for honoring Samuel Morey. This means much to me, bringing a direct, being a direct descendant of Sam, and also having written their regimental history. I apologize for not being able to attend today. Sam Morey was my great-great-grandfather on my father's side. I spent my first 40 years of life in Mays Landing, and my entire family is from South Jersey. I currently reside in Washington State, but Mays Landing will always be my home. Much of my family is at rest here, including my younger brother, parents, grandparents, and many, many others. John F. Kennedy was president in 1962 when one of Sam Morey's granddaughters, Pearl Newman, intrigued this 10-year-old boy with a book on the Civil War, which I still own. Pearl's older sister was Anna Newman, who had married and given birth to my father. As I began to learn where Sam had been in the war, I started to compile the data about his regiment. And in November of 2000, I published One Good Regiment, the non-fictional account of the duty performed by the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry. In 1995, I participated in an eight-day tactical event reenactment in Louisiana recreating the Red River Campaign of 1864 on the same grounds as the 1864 campaign. The trenches and rifle pits can still be seen in the woods, as they can also throughout Virginia and in many other places. For a full week, about 3,000 of us marched, slept on the ground, ate rations, dropped from wagons, got soaked in the cold rains, and sweated when the sun came out, and fought two battles each day. The wagons and cannon with us were all horse-drawn, and we didn't see our cars or have access to electricity for the whole week. I don't know how the Civil War soldier did this for three years. However, after the war, there was a dramatic increase in divorce rates, as it is after most wars. Today, we honor one Union Cavalry private, an Irishman who served his country for three years and came home to an empty house. Samuel Morey was born in Bass River, Burlington County, New Jersey, on December 27, 1839, to John Morey and Rachel Camp. Sam's father passed away when Sam was six years old, and Sam needed to help provide for his family. When his mother passed away in 1861, just as the Civil War began, Sam was 22 years old. It's entirely possible that, like so many others at the time, he joined the Army because the $12 he would be paid each month would go a long way to help support the family. I have no documented proof of what actually caused Sam to join a Pennsylvania regiment while he lived in New Jersey. I do know that the regiment was initially Irish and it remained predominantly so. Sam may have actually responded to an Irish call for volunteers, possibly even from New York, rather than the state of Pennsylvania's call. Regardless of those facts, in August of 1862, Sam Morey enlisted in what was called the Irish Dragoons, which was initially the 116th Pennsylvania Volunteers and quickly became the 117th, soon better known as the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry. When Sam mustered in on July 14th of 1862, he was listed as 5 foot 10 and a half inches in height with blue eyes and dark hair, and he indicated that he was a farmer. Private Morey served in Company I of the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry for his entire three-year term of enlistment. 
the 1st Battalion, which was half of the regiment, trained outside Philadelphia and was transported to Baltimore, where the 2nd Battalion joined them some time later. They trained as a full regiment for the first time at Camp Carroll, just south of Baltimore. As the smoke was clearing from the battlefield of Antietam, the regiment was sent into the combat zone, and by Christmas of 1862, they had arrived at Winchester, Virginia. In mid-June of 1863, while on a scout in the Shenandoah Valley, the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry came face to face with the entire Confederate Army heading north. This Confederate campaign led to the Battle of Gettysburg. Completely overwhelmed, Private Morey and his regiment pulled back to Winchester, and then were ordered to retreat from there in the middle of the night. In the darkness, they were ambushed and scattered after being ordered to charge into a battery of Confederate artillery on a hill at Steve Stevenson's Depot. During this three-day disaster, the regiment lost all of the wagons carrying the regimental and company records. Essentially, none of the regimental papers from before June 16, 1863 have survived. There are no illnesses or outstanding notes on Sam Morey's muster slips, and his regiment is credited with involvement in many confrontations with the enemy during the war. In a post-war interview, he stated that he was recognized as being good with an axe, and in 1864 he was employed with the Pioneers, clearing roads and building bridges for the Army. Sam Morey served with his regiment under many of the generals whose names are already familiar to you. Most of their service was with General Phil Sheridan's Cavalry Corps in the Army of the Potomac. In early 1865, General Ulysses S. Grant asked for one good regiment of cavalry, and the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry was chosen. They boarded boat boats at City Point, Virginia on the James River and floated down to Wilmington, North Carolina to march north with General Sherman's cavalry. The regiment remained in the Carolinas for three months, and after the end of the war, combating bands of guerrillas, Private Samuel Morey was finally mustered out with his regiment on July 14, 1865, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Sam Morey was illiterate, and the only documentation available after the war are random documents such as marriage records, census records, and pension records, which he signed with an X. I have no documentation of Sam being married before the war. However, there is one post-war document on which he stated that after the war, my first wife deserted me and went with another man. On July 30th, 1868, three years after the end of the war, Sam married in Egg Harbor City, New Jersey. He and his wife, Mary, had six daughters and a son between 1869 and 1882. One of his daughters is my great-grandmother. Records show that Sam worked at a variety of jobs as he aged, including as a day laborer and a collier, selling and transporting coal. Sam applied for a medical pension from the U.S. government in 1883, but he was turned down, and as a result, he worked as long as he was able to. Sam's wife, Mary, died in 1915, and she is at rest right next to Sam. After her death, Sam moved in with his married daughter, Jenny, in Millmay. The remains of that house can still be found in the woods. Five years later, when Sam was 81, 1920 census records indicate that he was a woodcutter, so apparently he was still pretty good with that ax. Sam's advancing age started catching up to him he gradually became destitute, and he developed various medical issues as his eyesight began to fail. During the late 1930s, Sam was still residing in Millmay, and my father and uncle both told me that they remembered visiting him. He said Sam was mostly bedridden by that time, but he talked and joked as much as he was able. In 1939, Sam was featured with a photo in a newspaper article when he reached the age of 100, and by that time he was completely blind and using a cane. Samuel Morey suffered a fall in early February 1943, and on February 20th, he passed away at his daughter Jenny's home in Millmay at the age of 103 years old, one month and 23 days. His death certificate lists the cause of death as old age and pneumonia. Sam Morey was laid to rest here on Tuesday, February 23rd, in Union Cemetery. His headstone is 
a government issue Civil War veterans marker, and he is also recognized as a member of the Sewell Post of the Grand Army of the Republic. We should always remember that the people who have shaped the world we now live in were a product of their times and not ours. The Civil War era is no exception. Today we're gathered to recognize and honor Sam Maury and all of the soldiers north and south who served in that era with Sam. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, at this time we will perform the actual Sons of Union Veterans prescribed um, dedication ceremony. Brothers of the camp performing the ceremony, please come forward and join me. gentlemen, on behalf of the Sons of Union veterans of the Civil War, I wish to thank you for coming today. We are here today to honor and forever mark the resting place of the last Civil War soldier of Atlantic County, New Jersey. As nothing worthy of merit can be accomplished without divine guidance, I ask you to bow your heads as the chaplain invokes his divine blessing. Supreme Ruler of the Universe, God of battle and of peace, we thank thee for this day and hour, for this blessed privilege of meeting here as sons of soldiers to pay homage to a nation's dead. We thank thee that in the day of trouble and the hour of danger, that thou in thy infinite wisdom raised up men who were ready to do battle, and if need be, to die so that in this country might be preserved. Grant us, we beseech thee, a continuance of thy watchful care. Grant thy blessing upon these sacred ceremonies, consecrated as they are the memory of brave and loyal hearts who dared stand for the right and were not afraid to bear their breasts to a storm of steel in defense of human liberty, a united country, and the brotherhood of man. Bless our country, preserve it in purity and integrity. Amen. Memorial Officer Charlie Morgan. The reason we assemble today is best explained by past Commander in Chief Mary Motion. When he addressed the last encampment of the Grand Army of the Republic in 1949, he said in part, and I quote, the records of 300 fighting regiments show that of their number, one in three was either killed or wounded. They stood in Antietam. They faced the heights of Donaldson and Fredericksburg and stood among the cedars at Stowe's River. They met the fearful shock at Shiloh, became granite columns with the rocks of Chickamauga, formed a living wall against treason's mightiest power at Gettysburg, moved unfaltering in the slaughter pens of Cold Harbor, and climbed up to rocky precipice and mountainside to the portals of glory on Lookout, Kemsaw, and Mission Ridge. the loss of human life? Even the comprehension will be but a dim picture of the reality. Unless our imagination be vivid enough, vivid enough to fill all of its lines and spaces with privation and suffering, unless we can call 
call up the summer's tempest and winter's sleep, unless we can behold them fording streams and battling the life of the enemy, ice and swift currents, marching day after day through swamps, standing on the lonely picket post until too wearied to even be wakeful, unless we can behold the gaunt starvation making hollow the cheek, dimming the light of the eye, unless we can see the long lines of shroudless bodies and hear the pitiful cry for water and the prayer for soup, I believe our imagination will come far short of reality. It was the privation, wounds, and death there. It was the suspense, loneliness, and suffering here. The roar of cannon and the crash of musketry on the plains and forests of the Southland were echoed by the cries of the orphans and the wail of the widows amid the dales and hills of the Northland. The blare of trumpets and bugles sounding charge yonder became the dry lamentation and the funeral dirge here. The outlay was not alone shattered limbs and wasted forms, but desolate hopes, ruined homes, and broken hearts. Not long after the piled death, not alone the piled death yonder, but the sacrifice and sorrow worse than death itself. In the shadow of 500,000 graves, in the daily presence of those that return diseased and broken down, the living still vocal in the echo of summer, with the memory of Belle Island, Salisbury, Miller, and Andersonville, lighted as though with lurid fires of hell, standing under the clouds of grief that darkened half a million homes, we proclaim a roll of honor of the Grand Army of the Republic. That role was made and completed in the days of old. It was written with the red love of human hearts, its letters more bright and more precious than, their, than were they writ in the purest gold. They were effaceably burned on the pages of life. Therefore, we the sons of Union veterans of the Civil War gather at this memorial in sacred memory of our fathers and their sacrifices. End of quote. If I may be so bold as to quote from the epitaph from another time and place, quote, tell them of us and say, for their tomorrow we gave our today. End quote. As all veterans gathered here are aware, a soldier cannot leave their post without properly being relieved. Private Samuel Morey, you are now relieved. I have the post. Rest in peace. Samuel Morey is the last soldier of Atlantic County, state of New Jersey. He was born in Tuckerton, New Jersey in December of 1840. He enlisted as a private in Company I of the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry of the Union Army. This unit was involved in the following activities and engagements during this, his enlistment. The battles of Winchester, Sulphur Springs, Mine Run, the Wilderness, Spotsylvania Courthouse, Falls Shop, Pavilion Station, St. Mary's, Jerusalem Plank Road, Malvern Hill, Bees Mill, Wyatt's Farm, Boyden Plank Road, Hatcher's Mill, Dabney's Mill, and the Carolinas. Honor attendants, remove the covering. At this point, I would ask the Maury descendants to come forward. the honor of removing the veil from the marker.
Heavenly Father, we again ask your blessing on all here and your protection as we depart this hallowed ground. Teach us to be ever mindful of the sacrifices of those that have gone before us. And behold your tender mercies, the defenders of this great country. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, guests of honor, next band, other camp members. This concludes this dedication ceremony. On behalf of all of us here, we thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Uh, we'd, be, we'd be honored if you would join us at the Fellowship Hall, Presbyterian Church, 6001 Main Street for refreshments.
me, it's not about us, it was about them. And one vet in particular, and that was Sam Murray. And that's that's all I care about. But I appreciate the accolades. Thank you. What are you doing, Frank? Nice spread, huh, Dad? Yeah. 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 Y